This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. As youth in India, many are often told it is important to remember freedom fighters. But here we're talking about something that happened more than a decade or so before India became independent. We're talking about the sacrifices made by nearly a lakh and a half Indian soldiers during the First World War or more than that. One and a half million, that's 15 lakhs. That's exactly why we're talking about more awareness because today it is really very difficult or is it uh, or if I may be um, questioned on whether it's right to say that do we have documented evidence of what happened or do we perhaps don't with the lack of it rather that's what we're discussing of what exactly happened what has the contribution been of Indian soldiers during World War one and uh, Britain again is very famous for museums uh, will will we have one for uh, our great Indian soldiers as well. But uh, to talk about that in detail, I have with me a few people who are considered authority on the subject. Nitin, I'm going to go across to you first. This is an initiative uh, by you to get people to remember the sacrifices made by Indian soldiers. What's likely to happen in the next three months? And, and how is the interest uh, among the people who've teamed up with you? Um, my initiative is to bring people together who have the knowledge and through that knowledge sharing, we will find ways of making people aware about the relevancy of their contribution. What is that one takeaway? What is that one big message or something that really touched your heart when you have been trying to bring together uh, the facts that happened during World War I and II, especially about contribution of the Indian soldiers? Uh, well, um, we've been working on uh, the India and the Great War Centenary Commemoration Project. Yes. Yes. Uh, for the last um, three years now um, and the role of the Indian uh, armed forces not just in the first but in the second world war as well is is very very significant it's something that's not very often uh, realized it's not very well known uh, in World War two we had the largest volunteer army in the history of human conflict uh, there were over two and a half million men uh, in arms uh, and each one of them was a volunteer. Uh, so in the First World War we had more than 1.7 million Indians that served, 1.4 million Indians fought overseas, 74,000 of them never went back uh, to the country that they came from. Uh, they died um, for a war that wasn't theirs but they died for honor, for duty. Um, and uh, it is, I think, our, uh, our bounden duty to, uh, to remember them because it's on their sacrifice and on their, uh, um, uh, uh, their contribution that actually, uh, you know, um, as Nitinji mentioned, the foundations of uh, sure. uh, our country sure. today are built. What can be done on behalf of uh, the Ministry of External Affairs? Sir, you represent the High Commission and I see an active involvement by the High Commission in an effort such as this. Yeah, actually, this question actually pertains to Skwan uh, Leader Rana Chinna, but I will exceed the brief and I say that already as part of the centenary project, a uh, number of books have been written, some of them by him. And the latest in addition is a, a graphic representation of the Indian contribution in both the wars. It is an eight volume book and which is being circulated not only within the country but to our all missions across the world. And then there are other books like uh, Last Post Indian War Memorials across the world. This, and, and there is a comic book that has come out on uh, the Indian contribution in world, war, world wars. And so definitely with these uh, efforts, uh, the awareness level is definitely going to increase because you see the target audience is first the school children and the youth. As I said earlier today that uh, the three takeaways for me from this symposium is remembrance, engagement and awareness. So remembrance why? Because they were our, our men. Yes. They were martyred. I as a soldier feel for it. I have an emotional connect with it. 
And so it acts as a motivation for me, my colleagues, and the future generation of warriors which India will produce. What can um, big ideas do? Uh, all of you are such a large team. What's being done to, to create events? Well, we're very excited. We're developing a new project which brings together Rana and the United Service Institution of India, the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, which is of course partly funded by the Indian government, and by Big Ideas Company. So we have history, we have commemoration, and Big Ideas is engagement. It's exactly what His Excellency said. And we're bringing everyone together to develop a new project for communities in India. We're going to suggest a new symbol for remembrance. So the marigold will join the poppy as a flower of remembrance and that's all going to come together this summer. How lovely. We could possibly have a new symbol uh, which goes along with the poppy. We could pro possibly, hopefully, have a little bit more about uh, the Indian soldiers and their contribution across uh, the globe uh, in uh, the Indian books and academics and hopefully museums. Uh, museums why not not just in England but also in India everywhere else good luck and thank you very much for joining us write your feedback OOE at NDTV.com 23rd of June is going to be arguably a very very in fact the most important day for Britain I have with me various people representing the Indian community and I can tell you that from much earlier to now there is a sway in the thought process many almost everybody wanted an in much earlier when it was earlier decided that there will be a referendum. Now there are many more who want an out. But here let's see what this group particularly wants. What is, what is your view? I think Britain should stay in Europe because the next generation is going to say to us, you are the last people to deal with global warming. We can only really deal with global warming if we do it across borders. Carbon dioxide doesn't care about borders. So we must be working with everyone okay. to make sure we can deal with global warming. Okay, so to, to deal with an, the environmental crisis, global warming, you, you feel it's better to do it together? A absolutely. 28 countries coming together deal with it. It's so much better than us doing it by ourselves. Okay, 28 countries sounds better. The strength sounds better than that of a single country to deal with global warming. You? Well, I want to remain because the country, United Kingdom, will be safer. Okay. And that is something I think so important. And let's not forget, Europe within itself has fought world wars. Okay, now being together, there are there's, there's less chances of Europeans fighting amongst each other. There's the first positive point and reason to remain. Second point, second important reason to remain is that in the day of, days of terrorism, where we have to be agile all the time, together we'll have better intelligence, better security. And I think that's one huge big reason to remain as part of United Europe. Uh, that, that is what we are. Okay, important point you mentioned. We, of course, are bringing this conversation to you from London, which has been on a state of high alert since uh, December the 25th. And so when it comes to security, uh, Prime Minister David Cameron has said that you will get access to intelligence information of all 28 states if you remain, who, of course, has been canvassing for an in. So you feel terrorism can be tackled if you're together. Absolutely, you know, L London is a prime example okay. of diversity. Communities living together. together, okay, in solidarity, in harmony. But what we have is the highest risk of terrorism. You, sir, in or out? I think we should leave because, on the point that uh, Mr. Shah was saying, mm -hmm. Britain's quite capable of looking after its own borders. It's done it in the past, it's quite capable of doing it again, and it doesn't really need to depend upon another union to look after their own securities. Okay. Is On there any other reason why you want an exit from the European Union? Certainly. Sovereignty. I think sovereignty is, uh, is one. Uh, the subscription charge to remain in is uh, 350 million. Mm. That can be avoided and spent on national health services, schools, okay. and how often you find business can't quite flourish because of EU directives which stop uh, and put a hold on what's, um, what could be quite simple. Okay. okay, so you're saying out because not just there is sovereignty that Britain can enjoy but also public money can be put to better use instead of being paid a subscription fee. What about you? Sir? I would like to say we used to, to say in because by getting in all together we can use the money for the, in the third world countries to develop the better education, sanitation, and also we are talking housing. There are other uh, countries in the world 
which has to join and work together and support the third world countries. By joining together, which we are, but we can support more in the education. And one of my colleagues said about the environment and climate change. We, we need that support for the global to see the warm weather is coming up, how we can develop and make energy. Thank you very much, all of you, you. for Thank your you. views. Thank you indeed. Write your feedback, OOE at NDTV.com. Let us know what you want to do, in or out. Thank, Thank you. you.